Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hey, everybody. Hello. How's everybody doing today? The day before Thanksgiving. Who's cooking? <laughs> I am. I wasn't going to, but I'm cooking for three people and I'm making a 15 pound turkey. That's five pounds of turkey per person. <laughs> not really, not if you consider the bones. I like a lot of leftovers, so I usually make well more than I need because leftovers are my favorite. Uh, let me shut off the auto thing. Um, yeah, Thanksgiving is my favorite meal of the of the year. Um, I love to cook Thanksgiving dinner, even though I don't like to cook. But there are two times I like to cook, and that's Thanksgiving and Christmas. Only if I'm having people over, which I usually don't for Christmas. I used to have a lot of people over for Christmas. But, but Thanksgiving, I do like to cook because I do cook a banging Thanksgiving dinner, I have to say. Um, so I'm happy that I'm going to be able to uh, have a Thanksgiving dinner. And my favorite is turkey and all the trimmings and dressings and everything and the sides. That's my favorite. Yes, it is early today because it is the day before Thanksgiving. And I want to be able to do an after stream to get some things done because I've been so busy all week. So I wanted to do it early so that I can, because I got up early, I've been up since seven o'clock this morning. So I've been busy and I've been working on a video and I finished the cover to my, ne my next patchwork journal, which is going to have a little flap like so, but I finished that and the video for it will be coming out. But I am going to be filling this journal and working in this journal after the mixed media mashup. For the the live stream i do afterwards but i wanted to get the video done for it so i had to work on that today so i literally just finished filming the video for it five minutes before i started this <laughs> because yeah i had to finish it so that's this journal and i want to finish it obviously you guys have seen the other journal which is pretty much done but it's you know the same as that except this one's got a flappy closure do thing um, and I'm going to put a pocket on it. I just haven't gotten that far. Oh no, I'm not going to put a pocket on this one because I would have done it already before I did that. Well, I can, I could still put it on. I could sew it and then glue the ed glue it on or whatever. If I really want to, it doesn't matter at this point, <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope everybody is, ugh, I really just need to get rid of this and get, I'm going to use store-bought journal today, be uh, gesso, because yeah, that one is disgusting because I put it in too big of a container and it's starting to get all yuck. After a while, it just kind of... Um, do I have, like, gesso from what? I know I do. Uh, I'll just use this. It doesn't matter. I'll use this one. Oh, did you, Maggie? Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, and I just got done with the second part of that. I'm going to get it up for tomorrow, either late tonight or tomorrow, whenever I get... This one's chunky, too. Why does Gesso do that? Even store-bought Gesso gets chunky after a while. Drives me nuts. Doesn't matter. It'll just add extra texture to my mixed media mashup. So who's playing along with us today? Everyone, I hope. I have a happy mail to show after I get this gessoed. Hi, Rome. How are you?
set that aside a minute. Clean off everything. Quiet, ladies. Out there being a pain in my ass. What else is new? I'm good. Being busy as usual. Um, so I got an envelope, which I did not open. I just opened this before I started the live stream. I ripped it open. But it's from Miss Sharon. Miss Sharon. Oh, she made me a card. Just because... Whoa, there's things falling out of the card. It says, just because... Just a small token to show you how much your time and talent that you share every day with us has become to mean to the poodle noodles. See what? Yeah, what's the you poodle noodles are sneaky. I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. We all love you and support you. I for one will stand up for for you to others. I think I might have said before, but you are like the sister I've always wished for. Hope you like these, for I can't think of anyone who would enjoy them more. Sharon. Thank you. Aw, oh, see, I'm more ATCs to go in my thingamajiggity, my ATC thingamajiggity little pockets. Very cute, very cute. And she used the words that I made. Very cute, very pretty trying to see what you used in the background it looks like maybe a napkin that's really pretty napkin and then some little punch outs or something of leaves very pretty oh are you in here miss sharon i don't think she's in here i haven't seen her yet and hi to everyone i didn't say hi to her. i'm really out of my freaking rocker today because i've been up for so long and been working <laughs> so much since i got up that i'm like all over the place today and then she, oh she made me a coin I haven't made any of these yet well I mean years ago I made something that was similar to these but not they were more I call them art tile art circles I did a video on it but they weren't I don't think they were a specific size they were just like whatever size but I've not made the actual artist trading coins yet these are cute I'm happiest when I'm with you it says isn't that cute she does a really nice job very talented these are for the poodle noodles pages poodle noodle pages oh she i think she means the sleeves unicorn women of two of six we aren't fearless we are fearless independent and original very cute look at the unicorn i love it thank you so much miss sharon i love it i'll put them all back together later oh yes happy birthday miss pauline wasn't it it was yesterday right are you here i saw somebody say it wasn't your birthday yesterday Did I already sing you happy birthday yet? Have I sang you happy birthday yet, Pauline? Or no? I don't see Pauline here. Is she not here? Uh -oh, maybe I'm seeing things. Uh, let me go back and say hello to everybody real quick as much as I can. We got Miss Roesta. Hello, Sandy and Zoe and um, Susan and and Erin and Sherry and River and Maggie and Gloria and Crafty Curmudgeon 
Lori and Barbara, Jamie. And who else? Um, Robin and Patty Ann and Carrie Ann and Trucker Janie and Teresa. And who else is in here? Miss Ethel or Jane. Mm, Taz. Miss Taz is in here. And Joey. Hi, Joey. And Carla. Miss Kennedy's in here. And Judy. Miss Rome and Dana. Maggie, I think I said Maggie, I'm not sure. Now I'm starting to not remember. Roy is in here. Hey, Roy. Crafty curmudgeon. Who is that? Is that your, is that your husband, Roy? No. Wait, I can't remember. My brain is just drawn a blank, but I know the name, but I can't put two and two together. <laughs> it takes somebody being in here a long time and consistently for me to remember their name. So don't like, don't take offense. Like you have to really be in here a lot for me to remember who you are. Hi, Angela. There's some people I'll just pick it up right away. There's other people that'll be in here all the time. But they'll be in here for a while and then not in here for a while and then they'll come back and I'll just forget and it'll, you know, it'll never happen. I just, you know, have an issue. John, it is John. Okay. I, th I thought so. And when I first said the name, I thought, I think that's, I think if I'm not mistaken, that's somebody's spouse. But I was like, not sure. And I didn't say it. And then when I saw Roy in here, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. It's Roy's. And I was like, well, let me make sure. <laughs> like, that's what my head does. It goes back and forth, back and forth. And Miss Sarah's in here. Well, it's nice to see you here, John. And Ilona's in here. Anybody else I've missed? I'm saying hello right now to everyone. Um, I have a package, or should I say a present? This came, I love these bags from Amazon, by the way, they're so pretty. Um, but it says, number one, from the 12 days of poodle noodles, you sneaky little, mm. poodle noodles are poodle pack supporters that like to use their noodles and come up with fun ideas to support the poodle pack mama just for the fun of it. Happy poodle, poodle miss. <laughs> So you guys are silly. Oh my goodness. Yeah, well, you guys need to quit sending stuff. So I haven't opened this yet. All I do is pull it out of the box. Because, of course, I like I like a surprise. I'm not like one of those other people that'll like... If somebody says they have a surprise for me, I generally don't want to know what it is. I'd rather them surprise me with it because I like the element of surprise. Um, ooh, ooh, I love this box. Is that what it is? Just the box? Because the box is awesome. It has really cool pictures on it. I really like that box. Is Santa Claus wearing makeup or is it just me? Does that Santa Claus look like he's wearing lipstick? He's a fashionable Santa. What is this? I have no idea. I can't see what's in there. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Oh my Lord, look at this. It is so pretty and it's real glass. It's a fancy ornament. It's so pretty. Oh, this is going to go right on my tree and I just put my tree up. Oh my God, so awesome. Good timing. I just put my tree up which I have to take pictures of the finished product. It does look beautiful. And this will go front and center on my tree. I'm going to move over other ornaments just to make this front and center. Isn't that beautiful? This will be only the fifth 
I have a couple of those cheapy Walmart mermaids, which are cute. Don't get me wrong. I like them. I'm not complaining about them. But I only have four of them. I got two in purple and two in teal. And so this will be the fifth mermaid. Well, this is like the first nice mermaid that I have for my tree. I have a bunch of fish, like teal, sparkly fish, teal, sparkly whales, stuff like that. Because my tree is done in like mermaid kind of under the sea, but it's like turquoise with purple, even though under the sea is not necessarily purple. So this is like perfect. This couldn't match better. And it's going to look so pretty with all this sparkle that's on it. It's so sparkly and beautiful. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Ooh, it says mermaid legends of legends of mermaids date back to ancient times. Always lovely. Mermaids are human to the waist and have a fish tail below. They have beautiful voices and love to sing. Stories are told of mermaids rescuing sailors or falling in love with a human and giving up the sea to be with the one they love. That is so cool. Old world Christmas. Oh, this is like a collectible. Ooh, this is fan. I don't even want to take the tag off. I might leave the tag on because I'm weird, but I don't care because I like it. It's so pretty. So we're going to wrap that back up so I don't break it. But I love this box. This box is badass. Old World Christmas. I guess that's a collectible. They do collectible stuff, but I've not ever, I don't think I've heard of them. My, If my mom was alive, she would know all the ins and outs of every collectible thing because she knew all that stuff, but I, not me. Like, she collected Department 56. A lot of you guys know what that is, maybe. Some of you might know what it is. Department 56 was, like, popular. She had, like, all the houses and all the things for Department 56. Snow Village and all that crap. happen hi Sharon I just opened your card a few minutes ago thank you for my card and for my ATCs I love them and I opened the pretty ornament from the sneaky poodle noodles it's really pretty it's my favorite ornament that's gonna be on my tree Yeah, snow babies were another one. Yeah, my mom had a few of those too. She had some snow babies, but mostly she had the Department 50 or the Snow Village. Yeah, Department 56 was like a was like a one brand that had like snow babies. They had the the Christmas the Snow Village and they had they had other things too. I don't know if they have more now, but I wanted to get all of the snow village that, see the snow village my mom had probably 30 to 40 of the houses and the things and all the little details with it. Um, and my dad, it was supposed to go to me when she died. That was my, like, that was supposed to be mine. And my dad took it and just decided to sell it to somebody random. So I never got it. And I was very upset about that, but I have pictures of every house that she had. So I always wanted to eventually replace every house, but some of them are discontinued, so it would be very hard to find. So it'll probably never, ever happen in a million years. But yeah, that would be like, because I don't have anything of my mom's. I have like nothing of my mom's. I have so little of my mom's stuff that it's insane. And I was really looking forward to having at least the Snow Village. So I just always thought maybe someday I would eventually replace all the snow village pieces that my mom had so that at least I would have that but yeah oh well but anyway one was for the poodle noodle group what do you mean Oh, that's why it keeps saying happy birthday, Pauline. 
my mind drew a blank. It was because I had that set for Nightbot. I was going to say, didn't I sing ha her happy birthday? I thought somebody else said it. It was Nightbot the whole time. And I'm thinking, wasn't her birthday already? And I like, that's how confused I get when some, it only takes one little thing to just throw me off my, throw me off my brain waves. I don't know. Um, let me shut that off because that was from last week. And I was wondering why I was like, did I miss, like, is, is, did I sing it too early? Was it like, I know I sang her happy birthday, but yeah, I know I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an idiot. And I didn't know it was Nightbot saying it. And I saw it fly by and I thought it was somebody else saying happy birthday to Pauline. I thought she was here. And then I was like, wait a minute, her birthday was the other day. Um, and then like, yeah, but my brain was like doing tricks because as it always does. Oh, well, I got several ATCs. Uh, you made all of them, right? I just put them all in those little sleeves. Every time I get one, I've just been putting them in those little sleeves. Oh, and if you guys haven't checked out, Miss Janie did a video on her little, um, her awesome little apple pies that she makes that are made out of like fabric and, you, and she stuffs them with potpourri and they're really cool. So go to her channel and check it out. I'm so glad that she made a video on that because I wanted, to, I, I would like to make one. I just don't have any of those dishes, the, the, it ha, like a terracotta dish and, um, I would like to, I'm going to see if I can find one at the Creative Reuse because I'm going there. I think I'm going there tomorrow, no, Friday uh, to the Creative Reuse. I have to make sure they're open first because some people, I don't know, they might not be open on Friday because it's Black Friday. I don't know. I doubt it. I'm sure they're open. But when I go there, I'm going to look and see if they have one of those planter bases and because I want to make one. I would love to like make one during a live stream because I love potpourri and I think that would be so pretty to have on my table. I would have loved to have done it for Thanksgiving. Obviously that's not going to happen, but when everybody comes for New Year's, at least I can have that sitting pretty out, you know, if I can make it. Yeah, I need the terracotta pot. That's I'm thinking I can get one at the Creative Reuse. I'm pretty sure. If not, I can find something close enough that'll work. I have the muslin already. Obviously, the potpourri I could pick up at the dollar store if I don't already have some in my cabinet, which I might. Um, I have fragrance oils and stuff like that. So, yeah, I could totally... Everything else I can pretty much... I have. I just need that terracotta pot. So, I'll find one. I think they have them at the Creative Reuse, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, if you haven't checked it out, it's on her channel. Miss Janie did it. And she did a really good job on that video, too. It takes you step by step. Very, very well done. I thought it was very well done. Yeah, I thought about that to do the foil pan. I thought about that. Um, but, it, and I might do that if I can't find something. I may not do the apples though, Janie. I may not do the apples. I just may take a couple of the pieces of potpourri or put something else on the outside to change it up a little bit or the cinnamon sticks because I don't have those and I'm I don't I'm not a big fan of cinnamon so I'm probably going to do something else for the little outside of it you know just to you know whatever but because I don't have that oh also dyeing my hair tomorrow morning uh, it's called vintage red it's it looks darker on camera but it's just a it's just a medium auburn color kind of so that's the color it'll be doing that tomorrow. I'll be doing that in the morning and then uh, getting in the shower, rinsing it off and starting my day because we're eating later. We're not eating as early as a lot of people do. So I'm not starting my turkey until like noon because we're not going to eat till seven, six, seven, eight o'clock at night. That's usually what I do um is we usually eat a little usually I'll have it so that it's done by like six. But because it's just me and Chris and Chris and our friend. I'm just going to make it so that it's done by like seven ish. So that's good. This gives me time to get stuff I need to do done during the day. Oh, thanks, Sharon. I'd appreciate that. Awesome. 
Why did you dye your hair too, Barbara? Because yours was lighter when I saw you at the expo. Let's do purple as our thing. Am I living in the future? No, it's Wednesday. You guys are ahead of me in Ireland. It's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Okay. We're going to pick our first card. Yeah, you can use your card on PayPal. I can send you an invoice, Carrie Ann, and you can just use your card to pay it. You don't have to have a thing. Or you can pay me through Facebook. Directly through Facebook, all you do is write in a Facebook messenger. There's a little um, dollar sign. You click that, you put in your card, and you just send me the money that way. That's how you can always do it. But you can pay on a like a PayPal even if you don't have um, even if you don't actually have a PayPal account. So if I sent you an invoice, you would just put your credit card information in and pay it. You don't have to have an account to do it. I mean, you might, I don't know whether, you know, however, you know, but what, what I'm saying is you don't have to have your bank hooked up or your card hooked up to actual PayPal. You could just pay it. Yeah, they're decorations. They're just to smell nice. They just smell nice because they're potpourri. They're meant to look like a pie, but actually just smell nice, but they're not a real pie. I mean, you could try eating it, Kennedy, and let us know what it tastes like. <laughs> you cheated, Kennedy. You're supposed to... I'm making a fresh pumpkin pie. This is what I'm making for Thanksgiving. Turkey. I always do a turkey stuff with apples and, and butter because it comes out, makes the turkey not taste like apples. It just makes the tur turkey really moist, really juicy. I've been doing this for years and everybody always raves about my turkey because it's always so nice and juicy. Um, and I'm making apple and onion stuffing. It's apple. It's like stuffing, but it has apples and onions in it. Like very little onions, though. I don't put as much onions because I'm not a big onion fan. So I don't, but you don't really taste it anyway because they kind of are like cook, they cook down and they're not as, but it makes the flavor really good and the apples make it really good. So there's that. I'm making a macaroni and cheese that I learned how to make back about six or seven years ago that is amazing. I'm really picky about macaroni and cheese. I don't like dry, weird macaroni and cheese. It's got to be like really cheesy and like yummy. And I finally had found a recipe. And so I'm making that. I'm making my mashed potatoes with, I usually put a little dill. I put sour cream and I put cream cheese in my mashed potatoes and I use I use heavy whipping cream to whip it up and they're like the most amazing mashed potatoes ever. They're so yummy and they're fattening. Everything I make is like so fattening that you could have a heart attack, but it's Thanksgiving. So who cares? And then I'm making the only vegetable besides potatoes, which are, not they're more of a starch. I don't know, is the zucchini boats and they're, you know, zucchini cut lengthways with, um, sliced tomato, um, sliced tomato on top and a bunch of cheese <laughs> so there's that with olive oil and cheese on the on top baked in the oven and then for dessert i have well for an appetizer those the zucchini boats are going to be an appetizer kind of so they're going to be that and then i'm making deviled eggs as an appetizer and then i'm making as dessert i'm making i just got marker on my hand I'm making chocolate covered strawberries and I have, I'm making a pumpkin pie and I'm making creme brulee. And this is all for three people. <laughs> a little insane, but I always end up doing that. So, hi Gail and Kathleen. So I'll take pictures. I'll probably do like, I might do like mini live streams with my phone of like some things I'm making. I'm gonna be making um, tomorrow morning, before I even put the turkey in, I'll probably make the creme brulee and the apple pot, the pumpkin pies. 
Um, and then obviously the deviled eggs, because those are Chris's favorites. So I don't usually, I mean, I love deviled eggs, don't get me wrong, but Dinner is at 7 o'clock, so if you want dinner, come over. I don't care. If you live close enough and want to come over, then come over. It's so, it's so easy to make a pumpkin pie, though. You just take the pumpkin pie out of the can, you put it in a bowl, you put, a, you put a, the pumpkin, a couple of little of the spices in, Condensed milk, yada yada, whip it up, throw it in a pie crust, throw it in the oven, an hour later you got a pie. Like, it's the simplest pie that you can possibly make. Anyway, let's pick our first card. Add tissue or napkin. I'm making two pumpkin pies because one of them I'm going to send home with Chris because he likes my homemade pumpkin pie. If I get, now some years I'll um, make homemade whipped cream for the pie and stuff. If I get uh, ambitious, I'll make it, but I bought whipped cream. Um, so if I get ambitious though, I will make, make some whipped cream. Real, it, it literally takes like three minutes to make whipped cream. It's not very hard to do. Speaking of mermaids, let's use a mermaid napkin. Don't we already have an open one of these? No. Yeah, I do somewhere. I don't care. I'll just open this one. So I haven't crafted or anything since the live stream we did on the Patreon, which was... When was that? Well, I mean, besides the video I made, which... Man, I was... That, I literally just got done with that video like five minutes before I was supposed to start the live stream. And I had to clean up all the mess from it, though. Which was like me rushing around like a crazy person because I thought, I'm never going to get this done. But I wanted to get it done so I can work on it. Like I wanted to get the inside done because I'm hoping to have it ready for the the auction on Saturday, which by the way, I'm having an auction on Saturday. Um, so if you're not doing nothing, I'll be around Saturday having an auction and those two journals will be up for auction along with a bunch of other stuff. Um, oh, I, if I have time, I was thinking about putting together a couple of like junk journal kits. Now, I think Sarah, you're in here, right? Yes, she was in here. I sent her, her and Tina are, were in my $50 tier of my Patreon. And I sent them both like a little mini kind of like journal kit. And that was like, I don't know. I've put them together before, but like just like bits. I, I don't know if I officially did it the right way. And I'm wondering if I were to do that, can somebody tell me what's what's some good things that I can put into a junk journal kit? Like what would be some good items to put in a junk journal kit besides like just just random papers and like things like that? Like what do you would would you normally put in a junk journal kit? Because I, I'm thinking of putting together some junk journal kits for the auction with like, you know, some binder rings or potentially a book that somebody can take and gut the book and use the book. I don't know. I don't know. That's where I'm confused. Is like, it, usually when I do it, I do like the rings. Um, I give the journal... Um, the binder rings and then some chipboard and then a bunch of paper and some like ribbon snippets of like like this long of ribbon and lace and stuff like that and then maybe some rhinestones and some this some that whatever that they can use to embellish but if I'm gonna make it the kind that like you take a book and turn it into a junk journal um, that's where I'm kind of like okay well, what do I do like I don't know Tea or coffee stain papers. If I have enough left, yeah. 
because I need to save the ones I made for journals. But I figured, see, tea or coffee stain pages to me are not like junk journal stuff. Junk journal, I thought, was supposed to be like scrapbook paper scraps, paper scraps, um, like different junk mail kind of, not necessarily, I'm not going to give my junk mail, but I mean, that's what a junk journal is though. It's junk stuff. T when you're taking something and tea and coffee dyeing it, to me, that's a little bit less junky. You know what I mean? Like, I think that a junk journal is more like literal junk, not necessarily tea and coffee dyed stuff. Because that's taking, well, at least in my case, I took new paper and coffee dyed it. I didn't take like, do you know what I mean? I don't know. So I don't feel like, I don't feel like coffee dyed paper. That's something like if the person wants to take what I give them and coffee dye it. Okay, great. But it's supposed to be more junky than that, I thought. Because it's a junk journal. Junk journals are supposed to be junk. I don't know, I could be wrong, but. Tags, maybe some kind of enclosure, like lace or something. Enclosure or something. Graphics, maybe. What do you mean, enclosure? Or do you mean like a closure? Something to close it with? Yeah, I do the graphics. I do give like laces or ribbons or stuff like that. Uh, envelopes. There's a good one. Um, I think I put envelopes in the one I gave them. I'm not sure. Um, I'm probably not going to coffee dye because that's going to take too much time. I just don't have time to do it. And the stuff that I coffee dyed, I need to hold on to because I need to make, I want to make more journals. I want to try to get a couple up in my store and not just through the auctions if I can, but I don't know when I'll be able to do that. Yeah, charms, broken jewelry, that's a good one. I have charms. I have buttons. Okay, cool. Uh, po I have posted stamps. Yeah, stuff from junk mail without my info on it. Yeah, I've got some really cool stuff that I can give on that. Oh, good. Good deal. Thanks for the info. Yeah. So I pretty much, but when it comes to like a book. Now, is it typical if I gave a... A couple pieces of chipboard and some binder rings. Is that pretty typical? Or like what, or, or do I, or is the book idea better? Like where I give like an old kid's book or like a book where they can take the cover and use that. Would that be better? Like I'm not sure which is better on that part. I don't know which is more, because I'm going to look for books at the Creative Reuse and see, um, if I find any that are, that can be used to take apart and like use the pages in the book, but then use the cover and stuff. Scrap fabric. Yeah, I got some of that too. Paper bags. Yep, I got some of those. I got Starbucks paper bags and I've got, um, I got all kinds of bags. Put a couple of those in. So yeah, I'm probably going to put together a few, maybe like three or four little kits that are um junk journal kits because i have all that stuff it's just a matter of getting it all together which i can do on friday and then i'm gonna maybe do i'm maybe gonna do one of them as a boho junk journal kit and give a couple pieces of like boho stuff to do like the cover with which I think would be kind of cool. Like I'm just going to put together like scraps of boho fabric that you can like either glue down or what did I do? Get back here. Either glue down or, or sew or something, or maybe I'll make a separate thing for that. I don't know. Ooh, that's an idea. I could do it like I did the Christmas one. I can give scraps of fabric to make one of those. Not necessarily Christmas, but I can give scraps of fabric just to make random, just to make a, just to make a scrap fabric journal like I did. Ooh, that's an idea. I can give pretty much everything you need for it. Um, 
except for obviously you have to have your own sewing machine but you can also glue it it doesn't have to be sewn you can also glue everything down or use fusible webbing or whatever dictionary some parts can be used too yeah paper clips i got those no flow journals are different flow journals are journals that are that you use the actual pages from a flow magazine People see people get things confused. I didn't know what a flow mag I didn't know what a flow journal was until I looked into it. A flow journal is a journal that is you take some of the pages from a flow magazine. That is what a flow journal is, which I do not have access to a flow magazine. They are not the most cheapest thing on the planet and I would give my left eye and my right boob for a flow or what's the other one? There's another one for one of those magazines or a kit or something to do that with because that would be pretty cool. But yeah, that's what they are. And I don't have the stuff to make that. But um, yeah, it took me some investigating to find out what a flow journal was. Um, and then people also think that a junk journal is like a journal that you use new stuff in, but it's not. A junk journal is stuff you use crap in. That's the point of a junk journal. It's not supposed to be stuff that you take brand new and put in a journal. That's not a junk journal. But some people I see all the time, I open my YouTube and put in junk journal and there are people going, oh, look at my junk journal. It has all brand new stuff in it. And it's like, that's not a junk journal. That's a journal. That's just a journal. Well, see, that's the thing then it's not a flow journal. The whole point of a flow journal is to have flow magazine pages in it. That's what I mean. Like it's not a flow journal and then it's just a junk journal. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, it's just not. It's only a flow journal if it has flow magazine pages in it. That's why it's called flow. Otherwise it's a junk journal with magazine pages. If that makes sense. People are always getting things misconstrued on what things are and how they work. I mean, you could do whatever you want. If you want to call it a flow journal, whatever. But I'm just saying, that's not actually what it is. I don't know who made up the whole flow journal thing, but I do know that I did some extensive research to find out what the hell it was. Because I think it was me and Secret one night. We're like, what is that? And so we took us a while to figure it out but we finally did and i'm like oh the flow magazine okay that makes sense <laughs> yes a junk journal can be a mix of old and new but that's you know but it should definitely like this journal that i made is not a junk journal this is not a junk journal if you want to call it that because i put some christmas cards but they're not used christmas cards and the paper a lot of this stuff is scrapbook paper that I bought and cut down to put in here. And maybe this stuff is made from scraps, which it is, but it still does not mean the journal is all made of scraps. This is definitely not a junk journal. It is a journal. I coffee dyed brand new paper. I used scrapbook paper that I got out of the book. These are, yeah, these are, you know, cards, but they're Christmas cards that have not been used. Do you see what I'm saying? So it is not, and I use some scraps of fabric, but it's still not a junk journal. There's not enough junk in here to consider it a junk journal. It is just a journal. It's a Christmas journal. People are always using the wrong phrases for things. And then I click on these videos and people are getting confused and, they, and then they keep spreading that around like, oh, look at my junk journal. And it's really not. It's just a journal. Yeah, and a junk journal doesn't normally have a theme. It's usually mishmash of crap. You know, it's usually just a mishmash of things. It doesn't have like a specific theme. You can maybe make the, the cover for it be like one cohesive kind of cover or whatever. But generally the insides are all just a mishmash of colors and papers and whatever. You know what I mean? It usually doesn't have any kind of theme or whatever. No, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Dawn. I love Dawn, Gail. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying a flow journal is, act. the technical flow journal is 
a journal that has the pages from a flow magazine that's what they are a lot of people though are calling other things flow journals that's just what's happening it doesn't mean that you know i'm not saying that it's she's wrong i'm just saying the actual flow what an actual flow journal is has a flow magazine pages in it that is what originated you know what i'm saying that's the original way to make it and everybody else is actually making a junk journal really if you're just using magazine pages or whatnot you know whatever but whatever it doesn't matter it's just things always get like that they get misconstrued and then you know like because i was just racking my brain you know i get the term is used loosely but it doesn't at that point it doesn't make sense like to me it didn't make sense that it was a, just a junk journal i was like well what's the difference i didn't understand the difference and then that's when i went on the little rabbit hole to figure out what the difference was and there is a difference it is specifically using that flow journal flow magazine which to me makes no sense it should just be called a magazine journal maybe or something where you use mostly magazine papers or something i have a bunch of old zippers like it, I don't I don't understand why somebody would call something a flow journal specifically because just using a flow magazine that not everybody has is kind of weird to call something a flow journal. So that's where people right a flow ish. That's what it's called. The flow ish journal is a journal that is made with uh, like other magazine. But see, then it's just a junk journal. This is where it gets all like confusing because like. I don't know things get like weird so it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter no it doesn't freaking matter but when it gets to the point where i'm just like i don't know what something is i usually will go crazy because my ocd will be like okay i need to know what this is because i don't get it and so then i'll go on a search and i'll figure out what it actually is and who started it just so that i can figure out what it is but who the hell knows? It doesn't matter. In the big scheme of things, who cares? But if you're actually looking to what to figure out what the origin is, sometimes you have to dig a little deeper. I don't know what that is definition from the flow magazine flow journal is a notebook with list to fill in yeah see i don't know i've never had the flow magazine i saw from a person that did it on youtube that put together a flow journal and they said what it was was based from the flow magazine so i don't know that's what i mean like i don't know Well, then, that, then that's just a junk journal. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make sense. That's a junk journal. That's the definition of a junk journal, too, is also a book with where you can put in lists of whatever. You can make a junk journal into anything you want. Like, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It's all the same crap. One thing is no different than the other, to be honest. I don't know. Like it doesn't make it, it doesn't make any sense then that's just a junk journal i was told that a flow journal was specifically a journal made from the pages of a flow journal i mean a flow magazine and that's what it was and that's whatever but then i thought to myself well what about if people can't get the flow magazine then what what are those people are supposed to do so then i saw people calling it a flow ish journal where they had magazines that they were using those magazines and i don't know and then i thought well isn't that just a junk journal like this is what i mean like it gets so confusing people shouldn't be so specific about journals just either if it's a junk journal it's got junk in it that's it it doesn't matter whether it's got a specific magazine to it or whatever it's a junk journal if it's you know, a pretty journal with all specific pages, then it's just a journal. It's just a handmade journal. You know, like there's so many names for things and it ends up getting confused. Anyway, I'm assuming everybody's done and we can move on to number two. Number two, add a doily. Yeah, a life journal. Exactly. How about that? Well, I think the problem too is life. <laughs> I'm writing life journal. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> I think the problem too is people on YouTube are so 
desperate to find something and call it something so that it becomes popular. Ever since pocket letters, if you've noticed, there are people out there that are trying to come up with a name for something of their own so that it becomes popular, so that they can be popular by making this thing and calling it something, right? Because it, it it's just the nature of the beast. That's what happens. People are just clamoring to have some sort of popularity about something. Do you know what I mean? And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that's where all of this stuff gets happens because people will have like one little idea and then they'll like make a big deal out of it and you know, like, oh, the flow journal, it's got to be this and this. And then somebody else will say, well, junk journals are this. And like, they like come up with it and they name it. And then, you know, and then there's other people that'll just come up with anything just to call it something. And then there's people that get on my nerves because they'll come up with one of these com concepts. And then if it, if it gets really popular, then they want to capitalize on it and tell everybody else they can't do this. They can't do that because it's their idea. That pisses me off like Jeanette Lane with the pocket letters and how she decided after that, after it became popular, then she decided that she was going to copyright it and nobody else was allowed to either sell kits that make pocket letters or whatever or capitalize on it in any way, which to me is BS. Same with the lady that made that binding, the hidden, what was it called? You guys know. I don't know who she is. I forget her name, but the hidden binding or whatever it is, that binding. And then she decided that nobody else was allowed to do it. And I'm like, you can't do that. You can't turn around. If you're going to do something like that, then you need to do it first. You need to copyright it before you go around teaching it to people. You can't decide after a year and it's now gained popularity that you're going to turn around and tell everybody they can't do it. Sorry, can't do that. That's just stupid. It wouldn't hold up in court anyway. Hidden hinge. Yeah, that's it. It's like, you know, come on. It's like mixed media mashup. People are always telling me, oh, you should copyright that and you should. Do I don't care. All I ever ask of anybody that does mixed media mashup. I mean, because there's like a hundred people that have, after I started doing this, that have come up with 9,000 other things to do and call it something else. You know what I mean? But it's clearly the exact same thing. Um... You know what I mean? It doesn't, you know, I don't know if she was the first one with junk journals, but it, you know, you might have, that, that might have been the first person you saw. I don't remember who the first person was with a junk journal because I have no idea because I didn't know, but I, I do remember she was one of the first, Shannon was for sure. I don't know if she saw it from somebody else or if somebody else did it, but I know she was one of the first that was doing them. But, you know, like my mixed media mashup, I always tell people the cards are in the thing. I don't care if you do it on YouTube. If you do, all I ask is that you link it to my channel and don't say that it's that, oh, it's, you know, these are my ideas and this, that. Even if you add your own cards to it, it doesn't mean that it's still not my idea. I don't care if you add your cards to it, but you still have to say it's mixed media mashup and link my channel. That's all I ask. I don't want money. I don't want nothing. I don't care. I didn't do it for money, clearly, because if I wanted to, I could have, and I didn't. I even had somebody contact me, a company contact me and ask me if I wanted to make cards to sell and sell it as a game, and I said no. Um, what was I looking for? Doily. The reason I said no was because I said, if that was from the, because they wanted a piece, they wanted to get like a piece of the profit, which that didn't bother me. It wasn't that it was, I did not want to make something. I'm not saying I wouldn't mind making the cards really nice and selling a stack of the cards. If I went through the trouble of like actually having them professionally done, I would, I wouldn't mind having them done and selling them in my Etsy store just for the price of the cards, not saying, Oh, well, you know what I mean? there's a difference, but they wanted to capitalize on the, the whole thing. And I said, no, because I, I already had it out there for free. I, er, that's what I wanted it to be is just any, anybody can use it. Anybody could do what they want with it. As long as they just, if they are going to use it on their channel, just shout me out. Big deal. But yeah, I don't, I'm not into it to make money off of it. 
Like if I was going to make nice cards, I would make the nice cards. You know what I mean? I'd design them and then I would sell them in my store. Why, why would I do it any other way? Well, not when they want to have the, the right to it and, you know, kind of revamp it the way they want it. I, I, that's not what I wanted to do. It's not what it's, that's not the point of it. It was, it's just a game that we play. You know, I'm not, it wasn't something I was looking to, my whole point of doing it was because I wanted it to be something that beginners can, can utilize to get them into mixed media. And that's it. I, I it wasn't a, oh, I'm going to get rich. You know, like, I don't care about that. None of that ever ever was even a question. But, you know, the only thing I do ask is that people link, you know, you know, if you're using my prompts in any way, you know, whether or not you got the idea from me and you made prompts that are, you know, some of them are my prompts and some of them are your prompts. It still should be the, the courteous thing to do is to link my channel. That's all. And be like, you know, this is where I got the idea was from, from you know, from Stacy. Go check her out. She does it on Wednesday nights, period, end of story. That's it. I don't want money. I don't want nothing. I give the cards away for free. I don't care who uses them. I don't care, you know. What you do, as long as you're not selling the cards, you know, you're not saying, "Well, I'm, I'll make you a set of the cards and I'll sell them for this much money." I don't. I just. I don't want anybody doing that because, because that's not right. I don't want any money. I just don't want anybody selling them. You can get them for free off of my thing, and anybody can make them. So far, I haven't seen anybody do anything like that. I have seen a couple people make their own version and use clearly majority of them are my prompts and they ended up calling them something else. And I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, people do things all the time that you can't help, you know, and I've said from the beginning, if you're going to use this idea or the concept or, you know, any of my prompts or whatever, at least, you know, give me a shout out, but you can't control people when they do stupid things and they you know, want to do their own thing and, and they don't want to give anybody credit. Well, then whatever. I'm not about to go around to people and be like, you can't do that. Like, cause I just can't, I just can't be bothered. But I do see people do that. I've seen several people that use my, that are using 90% my prompts, and they've made up some of their own, which is fine. But they acted like they came up with the whole idea by themselves. And I'm like, I've been doing this for two years. Nobody else is doing prompt cards as a weekly game. I'm not saying there wasn't prompt cards out there, because there was a few sets of prompt cards out there. They weren't done online, and they weren't done during a live stream, and they weren't done like this. And they were different, too. Much different. They weren't the same as mine. Some of them were more like, some of them were, the ones that were around a lot, like, a, have been around for a while, were like more inspirational, kind of. Or they were like, they had things on them, but they were more intense, like they were more involved. I don't remember seeing any of them that just had like, add a doily, do this, do that. Like, I don't remember seeing any like that, um, that I know of, that I can remember. I'm not saying there wasn't any, but I, I never saw any. And I looked around for prompt cards because that's what I wanted. Some for sex, what? <laughs> oh my god. What prompt cards for sex? <laughs> oh my god.
<laughs> yeah, I did see that video. I had it on in the background. I remember somebody had said something to me about it. And I usually watch her live streams, or not, I call them live streams, even though she's only done like one live stream. Her videos, I watch and I'll put on the, in the background while I'm doing something. And I had it on after somebody had said that. And, I, and what's funny is I already had started watching it, but I, it wasn't to that point yet. I had started it, I had stopped it because I had things to do or what, I had to go to the store or whatever. And then I got a, saw the thing where somebody said Dawn was singing it. And I said, oh, that must be the one that I started watching. I haven't gotten to that point yet. And so when I finished watching it, I for, well, when I started watching it again from the part that I left off, I had forgotten all about that. And then it gets all the way and it was like a good hour or more in, like an hour and a half in when she does that. And all of a sudden I hear her. I was in my bathroom right here and the, I had it on my computer right across the room. And all of a sudden I hear pink poodle and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I walk out and there she is trying to sing the, the song and it just made me laugh. I was like, oh my God, I about peed myself when I heard her try to sing it. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. What somebody needs to do is, I think, I think somebody needs to, you know, make some cards and like actually have like, see what I, if I had the patience, I'd do it too. I'd do it myself. Make different card sets that you can, that are like maybe like five different sets. One that's like, kind of like just straightforward and another one that's like has more inspirational stuff. And then like you can intertwine them and kind of use them together. And I thought about doing something like that, but it would just be a lot of work. And then you can like use, you can use one deck at a time if you wanted to, or you can use a different type of deck and you can use a deck that tells you like more in-depth things to do or one that's like, more vague or like i don't know it would be cool i have a book did i gotta tell you guys about this i couldn't i showed you the outside of it in a live stream one night my pop-up book my sex pocket pop-up book that's hilarious um, but I wasn't really, I was able to show like one page and I couldn't show a lot of it because, <laughs> but it's pretty funny. Box of dares. Oh, that's cool. Well, I'm glad Dawn started to do live streams. I don't know if she's going to keep up with it, but I think she should because I always just assume she did live streams all the time. I think maybe I just assume everybody does. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just because like she talks, you know, like a lot of people do when they're in a live stream where they just kind of chit chat about whatever. And it made me think that she was live streaming for some reason. I used to always say, you know, something about live stream and she would always say, I don't live stream. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, oh yeah, you do videos, but they seem like live streams. Probably because they're lengthy and she just works on whatever and, you know, like her journals and stuff like that. And then she just talks about whatever. And I think it just always reminded me of a live stream. And I'm glad she's doing live streams. And I think she should do more of them for sure. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, she basically chats with everybody in her videos to the point where it makes me think that she's live streaming. I always think to myself, oh man, I, you know, like I would be watching her recorded just video and I would think, oh, I have to catch one of her live streams. I never catch one of her live streams. And then I have to catch myself and go, oh, wait a minute, she don't do live streams. <laughs> because that's just how it feels. It has that feel to it, I guess is what I'm getting at. It has that live stream kind of feel to it. And she's the only one that I think that way. Yeah, she had one live stream that she did and 
I didn't I didn't catch it live, but I, I watched the whole recording of it. And I was so happy that she did it. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Like, you feel like you're answering her while you're watching. <laughs> oh, has she done three? Oh, see, I haven't. I'm, I'm behind on the loop. All right, we're going to go for number three. I'm out of the loop because I don't, I don't watch as many videos as I would love to watch. I, I end up getting so trying and when i do watch a live stream i'm usually not watching it watching it the you know like i'm usually doing something else oh paint or ink sprays i didn't even hold up the car paint or ink sprays you can use them through a stencil or just spray them on to get some color but yeah, usually I usually never catch anybody live anymore because either A, my sleep schedule is so completely screwed up all the time that I never catch anybody live because nobody ever live streams as late as I do. Second of all, um, if I catch, what I'll end up doing is the recording. Um, I'll end up seeing the recording and I'll put on the recording and I'll be doing stuff. I never just sit at the computer. I don't sit. I don't just sit. That's not me. I never just sit down and watch something. Unless it's early in the morning or whenever I get up. When I first get up, I'll have like my breakfast, whether it's a bowl of cereal, while I'm waiting for my medicine to kick in. But then I'm watching like videos of not craft things. I'm watching my favorite like YouTubers, which are not crafters. Um, and those are the videos I usually am watching when I'm sitting down. And then when I start like doing stuff and getting stuff done, I put a live stream on or a recording of a live stream. And if I usually am watching an actual live stream while it's live, I'm usually, I usually don't ever say I'm there. I usually lurk and I just leave it on and I go about my thing. Cause if I start chatting, then I end up feeling like I stay there and chat and I usually don't get things done. So that's usually what happens i know that's why i don't sit and watch things either i am early i put it in the group why i was going to be early today I, I put it last night because i have things to do tomorrow and i want to be able to still do an after stream after this and i got up very early which means i'm not going to be up very late tonight and plus i have to get up early for thanksgiving tomorrow because tomorrow's thanksgiving so I can't be on here till three o'clock in the morning and I needed to make it, I just needed to make it early today because I got things to do. I got things to do. Sometimes I have sort of a life, not always, not very often, but sometimes. <clears throat> Let's see. Sometimes. And I'm actually cooking. <coughs> I'm just going to spray some color on this. I'm actually cooking tomorrow. And I got a lot to do. So. I can't be all. Live streaming. And doing mixed media mashup all day and night. I just can't, not today. I gotta dye my hair tomorrow. I gotta clean tonight, hopefully at some point. My 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 dining room looks like crap. So I don't even know. There's not even a place for anybody to sit. <laughs> I gotta take care of that. I still have to put the things on my table because I have like a nice purple table runner and placemats that I usually use for Christmas that it's like purple Christmas kind of looking. I don't know. That's what I put up because my tree is purple and teal. I'm putting the purple. I have like a purple table runner to put on the table and then purple placemats that are like kind of Christmassy themed, I guess in a weird way. Oh, 
Unfortunately, our shops aren't all closed on Thanksgiving. Most of them are open. Um, at least until like 6 p.m. Some shops are open 24 hours on Thanksgiving, I think. No, I don't, wait a minute, I don't think so. Walmart usually closes Thanksgiving Day by like 6 p.m. And then Christmas Day, I think, are the only days that Walmart closes. Do I have a garage? Yes, I have a garage. Why? You gonna go watch from your TV screen, Gail? Hi, Little Witch Crafting, how are you? I like your name, that's cute. Hi, Danica. I'll take pics of my table. It's not gonna be anything massively fancy because I don't. I didn't get everything out for my table that I normally get out for my table. Um, I'm just putting those purple things on and pretty much that's it. Um, and I'm putting some of the pump, little pumpkins that are still good that I have on my table. I'm going to put them in the middle of the table. And that's all I'm doing. It's nothing fancy. And then for Christmas, if I can get it out at some point, I'll then remove the pumpkins and put the Christmas little Christmas tree that I have that goes in the center of my dining room table. If I can get it out easily and find it easily, it'll come out. Otherwise it ain't coming out. <laughs> yeah, we have a Facebook group and then I also have a Patreon and my Patreon is a way for you to, um, support my channel, support my, you know, my, my YouTube and all that. At the same time, you get things in return. So if you if you donate a dollar a month, you get all my live streams that you will not get publicly that are private um, that I do during the week, which could be between one and three extra live streams that are that nobody else gets to see. And that's just one dollar a month. There's no hidden fees, no tax, no this, no that. It's w literally one dollar. So that's, oh, thanks, Janie. Janie just put the link up to my Patreon. And then she also, before that, put the link up to my Facebook group, which is always free. And that's just a group you can join. And it's just a bunch of people and we all share our art and we have challenges and all kinds of things um, there. <laughs> And when I do my Patreon live stream on Friday, I have to pick four winners for the class. Because the class is going to be on the 27th, the Patreon class for the 10, is it $10 or $15? Crap. $10? $10. So the Patreon class is for the, this month is for the $10 tier. And the $10 tier, we're going to be making a... Christmas tree. We're going to decorate a cone, one of those cone Christmas trees. We're going to decorate one of those. We're either going to make one of our own or you can get them in the store. They're easy to make, so you can just make your own. And we're going to decorate one of those and it's going to be really pretty. And so that's going to be the class. I was working on that earlier today. And so I'll put, everybody will get invited to that in the next day or so. Um, but it's nothing that you need to have major supplies for. We all pretty much have everything for that. I mean, it's just, a piece of you know chipboard or cardstock to use for the cone and then some vintage papers or music paper or whatever you got to decorate it and then some doodads to decorate it with but that's going to be the class this month so if you're interested in being in my patreon classes it's um that's also an option on my patreon it's at the ten dollar level the one dollar level will get you all the live streams the ten dollar level will get you all the live streams plus you'll get something sent to you every month plus you'll get a class every three months and you get chances to be in a class every month as well. So how big of a cone? Uh, like a 10 inch, you know, like the 10 inch paper mache cone trees, not the foam ones, not the, not the styrofoam ones, the paper ones.
but yeah, we do classes and we're doing a couple different swaps this month in the Facebook because we have a private Facebook group. If you join Patreon for $5 a month or more, you get to be in the private Facebook group and we do swaps and all kinds of stuff in there. And then $10, anything $5 and above, you get to be in the Facebook group. And then $10 and above, you're in the Facebook group, plus you get stuff sent to you, plus you get a class. And then the $15 a month, you get a class every two months, plus you get stuff sent to you, plus you're in the group. And, and it goes on from there. You can read all the tiers, but $1 a month will get you all the live streams. And the recordings too. So if you can't make a live stream, live you can watch the recording from the same link it doesn't matter because as of right now the only live streams i do during the week that are public are today generally um unless i have something specific that i'm putting on my channel that's a public for something public but that doesn't happen that often oh that's just not glued down all the way all right are we done with paint and ink sprays we're gonna do number four yeah the styrofoam ones won't really work you're gonna want to have a paper one because you need to glue paper to it and it's not it's gonna look kind of weird if you try to do it to a styrofoam unless it's like you might, I don't know, could you get away with it with one of the really smooth styrofoam ones? Maybe, but I don't know. Music, book, or dictionary papers. So if you got music paper, book paper, dictionary paper, you can collage that on. And um, I have a mess over here, but I might have some pages. Here we go. I have strips of pages that I saved from whatever I was doing that I'll just glue on. Glue a few of these on. Yeah, you're at the five dollars. So you sh are you in? You're in the group, right? The Patreon group. I should have. I I'm pretty sure I added you to the Patreon group already. Yeah, you can always change the tier you're in. You can lower it, high, make it higher, whatever you want. You can go in and do whatever you want at any time. It, it, it charges everybody at the first of the month. So no matter what tier you're in or when you join, it's not going to take money out until the first of the month. So if you join today, it's not going to take the money out until December 1st. It'll take the money out December 1st. You're not eligible for benefits you know until december 1st but if you're in the if you're in the if you join now like i'll put you know you'll get all the live stream stuff and all that stuff anyway so it doesn't matter um i usually don't it, it'll tell you you're not eligible but i still put everybody in for the live streams you'll get everything you just won't get your patreon goodies sent to you that are sent to you if you're in the ten dollar or more until obviously december because i don't send them out until mid-month um anyway so but other than that like classes if you join now you'll be in the class for december um or actually the class for uh november even though it doesn't really start until december 1st you'll still be in the class you know if you're a ten dollar patron or more I, I i just add people in anyway so it doesn't matter so either way you'll get your your whatever's Yeah, we're doing the we're doing a tree this month the next yeah this month and next month um we're doing christmas related things likely um a lot of times most of the time i give i, I usually put a poll up in the group and i'll ask what you guys want to do but for this month and next month i have things planned already um to do for the classes so i won't be putting a poll up for those two months but then for january we'll start putting the poles back up again.
But if you go to the Patreon site, you can read all the tiers and everything about it and what's in everything. And it'll tell you every tier and you can just choose which one you like. If you just want the, the, uh, the live streams, then go for it and just get the $1 a month, you know, it's whatever, whatever you can afford and what you want to do. If you like to join in on the classes, then, you know, you can read all about what you get in each tier for that. And even if you join for $1 a month, you, I still do a drawing and you might get to be in one of the classes. Um, so I do drawings for all the lower tiers. So even if you're a $5 tier, you get to be in the things and then you'll have, you, I mean, obviously if you're a $5 a month, you don't get classes, but you'll be in drawings and you, you have a better chance of getting into a class from, if you're in the $5 than you are the $1. Um, but you still, you know, everybody will eventually get into a class. I'm sure at some point because pretty much everybody always does. Yeah, if you're gonna change your tier, um, I don't know what you're what you what you're gonna change it to, but if you're changing it up, do it before December first. This way, you can get goodies sent to you. Because right, if you're a five dollar now, and if you're gonna change it to a ten dollar or whatever, if you want goodies sent to you next month, make sure you do that before December first, then, so that I can make sure that the goodies get sent to you in December. I just send out like little like some die cuts or some images, maybe ATC or a tag or whatever, or whatever. I send out little goodies. Yeah, the classes, we always have a good time during the class. The classes are long. They're, you get your money's worth. Absolutely. I can say that. Um, I mean, I don't try to say that, you know, you know, I, I don't, I don't like to say, oh, my classes are the best because no, I'm sure they're not the best, but I, you know, that's not for me to decide. That's for the people that take the classes to decide. But I will say, I do have very long classes. So you definitely get your money's worth because <laughs> we stay for hours and I stay until everybody is happy and satisfied and done. And usually people are leaving well before I, I'm done. <laughs> usually people are leaving <laughs> and I'm still going. So I'm just saying, I keep it, in, and you can watch the recording if you don't make the class. Like, for some reason, if you can't make the class, you know, you can always watch the recording anytime. But, yeah, you guys, will, you get your money's worth, because I'm usually there for three, four more plus hours. Most classes you take, they're, you know, $45, $50, and you get two hours if you're lucky. I don't do that. My classes are at maximum $25. That's if you paid for it separately or if you're in the $25 tier and you want, you get them every month. But you don't, you know, that's the most they are. And because you could pay for them separately. If you just wanted to take a class, you could pay for a class. It's $25. If you're already a $5 Patreon and you want to take a 20, you know, one of the classes and you're not eligible for it because it's not in your tier, you take that, you could just pay $25 minus whatever you're paying on your Patreon. So if you're paying $5 and you want to take the class, it would be $20 for you. If you're not a Patreon at all and you want to take a class, they're $25. You, you can just take the class. You don't have to sign up for the Patreon. You could just PayPal me the money and you'll be added to the class. All right. Does anybody need me to slow down? Probably not because I'm going slow. I'm assuming I can move on to the next one. Where's my drink? Oh, there it is. I'm like, what is it? Oh, really? I was one of the first people you subbed to? Wow. 
Bye, Carla. Good luck at the doctors. I hope whatever they do, they make it better and not worse. <laughs> All right. I went to the doctor yesterday. I got my eyeglasses, finally. What are we on? Five or six? Wait a minute. I can count the cards. One, two, three, four, so five. Yeah. So I went to the eye doctor yesterday, and I have the reason why. I'll put this out first. Metallic paints. The reason why I always had trouble, no matter if I wore my, what are these? These are my point one twenty fives. These are my weak ones. But I have another pair that are one fifties, and these are one seventy fives. These are too weak for me, but I brought these with me because I was hoping they'd be able to put the lenses in these frames because I like these frames. But no, of course they cannot. So whatever. So anyway, I have these are 175s. I have another pair that's 150. It was weird because I'd wear the 150s and they'd be okay. And, but like sometimes they felt too weak and then I'd wear the 175s and these would feel good, but sometimes they would feel too strong. Well, come to find out one of my eyes is a 150. The other is a 175. I have an astigmatism in my left eye, but other than that, I have better than 2020 vision when it comes to like long distance. Like I have a really good vision to the point where I was able to read the bottom level on the chart. And he even said for 46 years old, that's pretty dang good. And, or 45 years old, sorry, I'm aging myself. Um, I have better than 2020 vision and that's pretty unusual for somebody that's 45 years old. Cause once you get to a certain point, in age, generally your vision starts to go down, even if it does, even if it only goes down slightly, like even if to have better than 2020 vision in your eyes at my age is pretty unheard of. I don't know why the rest of my body is crap, but yet my eyes are good. Don't get it. But when it comes to reading and like small things, you know, I do have issues with that, which most people get as they get older. Um, but he was like trying to give me glasses that I'd have to wear all the time just to fix the astigmatism in my left eye. And I said, no, 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 I don't want glasses that I have to wear all the time just for that. I said, I just want reading glasses. <laughs> That's okay. I'll just take reading glasses. So the reading glasses have something to adjust your astigmatism, but obviously I don't wear them all the time, but I don't care. I didn't want permanent glasses. To me, that didn't make sense. One of the eyes would have been just perfectly clear and the other one would have had like some astigmatism thing. And then they would have been bifocals for reading. And I thought, nope, I don't want that. I think they were just trying to upsell me glasses. I was like, why would I get glasses for all the time if I have perfect vision? Doesn't make sense. You have all those too? Oh, you mean like the different glasses? I don't have 250s. I, those I don't have. Those, those seem, they, they, they would be probably a little bit too high, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Metallic paint. Let's do a little gold. Gold and teal. I usually, I used to save those, but then I stopped saving them because I had so many of them. I'm just going to put it on with a credit card of some sort. But yeah, so then I got my glasses. They costed me $11. I don't have the glasses. They have to send, they have to make them. But they, they had the crappiest selection of glasses, first of all. They all look like old lady glasses. They were horrible. And there was only one pair that I even remotely liked. And I was afraid that because my insurance covers up to like $125 or something for glasses. Um, and I was afraid that none of the glasses I would want, which really there was only one pair. I thought they were going to be more and too expensive, but it turns out they were just $11 more than what I was eligible for. So I said, because she was like, well... 
those are you, those are you're gonna have to pay more for those and i thought she the way she said it i thought she was gonna say that i had to pay like a lot of money and i was like well how much more oh it, it's with your insurance it'll cost eleven dollars and i'm like oh big big scary you know price i'm like that's fine i said i'd rather have, pay eleven dollars and be happy with the glasses than you know buy some grandma glasses that i don't like because that's what they all look like grandma glasses i don't need them to i mean obviously nobody's really ever going to see them because they're only used in this room and i'm the only one that uses them and nobody's in here but i really liked my pink ones and i was hoping they could put the things in there so what i thought is I'm going to get these glasses since they were only $11, whatever. And then the next time I go to the store and find some cute glasses that I like, because I know that I'm not going to be able to find these because I bought these years ago. But the next time I see glasses that I really like, I'm going to get two pairs. I'm going to get one in 150, one in 175. I'm going to pop one of the lenses out and take one, you know what I'm saying? Make my own. And then I'll have cute glasses, two pairs of cute glasses, actually, because I can take the other ones and put the other lens so that one is 150 and one's 175 and just make my own. And hopefully that will be fine. Hi, Mary Jane. Glasses. See, that's what they would have normally costed me. But because of my insurance, um, they were... Well, you probably needed all, these were for reading glasses. For regular glasses, it would have been more expensive. But because they were reading glasses, they were, they were, um, yeah, reading glasses are less expensive than, than like regular glasses that you get, you know. So. Oh, really? Well, 46, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not terrible compared to like, because Chris always had glasses and, and he, he got LASIK, but he needs to either have LASIK again or he's got to get glasses. And since he can't afford to get LASIK right now, he's going to get glasses. And so he was asking me about their selection of glasses because he thought he would go to the same eye doctor. But I told him, I said, don't bother. Their glasses sucked. They had like a crap selection, even for guys. They had a less of a selection for guys. I said, and, and I and I looked at the guys ones to see if, if there was any that Chris would even like. And I was like, no, he wouldn't like any of these. Um, they just didn't have a very good selection where, the, where I was. But yeah, once I get them, I'm, I'll be excited to be able to finally have proper glasses. Because I kept thinking to myself, am I ruining my eyes using the wrong type of glasses? I didn't know if they were right. I don't know. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, if you need something special, of course it's going to cost more. But they, you know... But, I mean, if I would have let them upsell me on the other glasses they wanted to give me, they would have been more. That's what they always do. I, if you ever go to an eye doctor, they always make it, you always walk out of there needing glasses no matter what your vision is. Like, they're always going to want to sell you glasses because that's where they make their money from. They make their money on glasses. So they're going to try to sell you glasses. They always want to, they always want to sell you something. Hey, 
They were trying to t sell me like glasses for looking at my monitor. They were trying to sell me two different types of glasses at one point. He was talking about glasses to watch. He's like, well, how far do you sit from your computer monitor? I'm like, well, my computer monitor is up on the wall. I said, and it's big. I said, I sit, you know, a good three feet, four feet away from my computer, computer monitor. And he's like, oh, well, you might want to think, you know, you might want glasses for that, you know, because the readers are going to be good for close. But, you know, you might want glass. I'm like, but I can see my computer monitor. I have no problem with it. Like, that's not, the first question he should have said was, are you able to see your computer monitor well? Do you have any issues with it? But instead, it was, well, you you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to look into getting you some glasses for looking at your computer monitor. I'm like, well, I could see my computer monitor. I have no problem seeing my computer monitor. I can read everything on my monitor. First of all, I have a 42-inch computer monitor across the room that I sit in front of that is huge. And this one right here that I'm looking at is a 32-inch that's up on the wall. I can see it perfectly fine. I can read everything perfectly fine. I don't need glasses to see any of that. My vision is very good, and I don't need that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need it. Like, they kept trying to, like, get me to get something more than just reading glasses. Because, like I said, reading glasses for them are a lot cheaper than other types of glasses. So they wanted to try to pile on as much as they could. Oh, they did that to you too, Janie? Yes. Yeah. They want to make it seem like you need glasses for everything. I'm like, I can see my monitor. I don't need glasses for that. And they were asking me like about my night vision. I'm like, I don't have any problem. The only thing I have a problem with is in, if it's really bright out, I have issues during the day with the sunlight because I've always had uh, sensitivity to light, like sunlight, always. If it's bright out, then my eyes are hurting, like literally hurting. But there's nothing they can do with that. Um, I don't need a prescription for that. I just need to wear freaking sunglasses. And I do. I wear sunglasses all the time when I go outside. Even if it's, even if it's overcast, I wear sunglasses because my eyes are so sensitive to light. Well, they couldn't make me go blind because the total for my bill was $51, and that's with the glasses, because the glasses were 11 They made me pay a copay, obviously, for the exam, and then they made me a copay for the lenses. So then I had to pay for the frames were, 11, were the ones that were $11. So altogether, it was $51, but it was just stupid. I mean, I didn't know it was going to cost $51. Like, I thought, because the insurance, like, well, I did, kind of, because Chris told me the day before that it was going to cost me $20, because he works for Cigna. It was going to cost $20 co um, copay, and then he's like, and I think it's a co $20 copay, too, for the lenses. And I went, oh, crap. I thought if it was just going to be $20 copay, and then I thought the glasses were going to be, well, I knew, well, the glasses would be free if I kept them under a certain price, but they were just all ugly. Um, and so I thought at best I was just going to pay $20. And when he said a 20, there was going to be a $20 copay for the lenses, I was like, oh crap. I was like, so now I'm up $40. And then when I got there, I was like, well, I might as well get the glasses I like for $11 than get granny glasses for free. So that's how it ended up being $51. I didn't really have $51 to spend on it, but it's either now or never because he, Chris isn't going to get the vision next year. And there's no point in getting the vision for next year if we don't need it. Because I'm not going to get my eyes checked again for at least a couple of years. Hi, Setu. All right, let's do number six. Thanks. 
yeah, it's um this is it's called blue vert iridescent iridescent blue green blue verde iridescente. I don't know, it has different languages, but it's basically blue iridescent blue green. And it's by PBO Studio Acrylics. It's a cheap acrylic paint, but it's nice. Um, number six, stencil. Yeah, I can't wait to put that ornament on my tree. I have to take pictures of my tree so you can see it. And every year, like I'm going to do this tree again next year. And what I'll do is next year, like between this year and next year, I'll make some ornaments for the tree as well. And I'm going to make it a little better each year. So it, what it is this year, it doesn't have as many mermaids on it, but it's got the fish. And like by next year, I'm going to make some really cool, like metallic sparkly kind of like what looks like seaweed um, out of like something. I've got some ideas in my head and I'll probably do a video on it, but I'm going to make like some seaweed things and then I'm going to put them, I'll wrap them around like a stick you know, and then put them into the tree so they stick out like seaweed sticking out everywhere. So I'm going to do that. Um, the star that I have for the tree is temporary. It was a cheapy, cheapy one that doesn't even light up from Walmart, but because it looks like, it looks like a sea urchin because it's like silver tentacles all over it. So it looks kind of like a sea urchin and they had an ornament just like it in the same area that they had like the mermaids and I have like a starfish ornament. So it, I think it all kind of went together. I think it was meant to go with it because it does look like a sea urchin, but I'm going to make a better star for the tree and I'm actually going to make it um, because I'd like to make a starfish ornament uh, or a uh, topper for the tree and have it light up. But I think I'm going to make it myself unless I can find one online that's not ridiculously expensive, but I wouldn't mind having like a really cool, like light up starfish topper for the tree. Um, but I got this one cause it was $8 and it was cheap and I didn't have anything else to put on top of the tree. So that's why I did that. But yeah, I'm going to make my own or something or find one if, you know, for next year. For this year, the one that I got is fine. I prefer one that lights up, especially on a bigger tree. Like mine's a six and a half foot tree or something or seven foot tree. I prefer a light up one like if it's a small tree i don't mind if it's not lit up but for a bigger tree i like the, the light up i like the light up uh stars or whatever i gave chris my other little tree that i had because he didn't have a tree and i told him i said you know i said why don't you put up a tree and get your apartment straightened out so that you know it doesn't look so bad because He's, he moved in almost a year ago and still hasn't really unpacked anything and still has like no furniture. But then again, that's lazy ass Chris for you. He doesn't, he doesn't generally do anything he should do. <laughs> Bye Maggie. Have a good night. And I don't have a skirt for my tree. I'm going to um, see. I have like a, I usually just take a piece of material and kind of bunch it up underneath of my tree. Um, and I know I'm sure I have something that'll go. I just haven't had a chance to look and I need to do that before tomorrow. So I'm going to have to look around for something I can use as a skirt for my tree. Um, I also got pink lights for my tree for in here, which that one I haven't put up yet. 
Um, that one I'll be putting up next week. But I got um, some pink lights finally for two years, three years. Every time I've gone to get pink lights for that tree, they were always sold out immediately. So I found LED lights that were only $5 and I got those because that was all they had. They didn't have the other kind, but I didn't care because I just was like, I just want a set of pink lights on my damn tree. I have all white lights, but I want to have at least one set of pink lights. And yeah, I kept um, looking for them and every year I'd get them too late or I'd get there too late and they would have, they'd be all sold out. Here, I'll use this. I've got enough on here to do some more. So I finally have pink lights. And then, of course, Miss Tammy sent me lights for my other tree. So my other tree has all nice lights that are not blowing out. The lights all work. <laughs> so now I just have to hope that the regular lights I have for my little tree all will work, which I'm pretty sure they all do because I think those I all, you know, bought new ones and, and everything. And plus there's an extra set of those uh, ones that Tam Tammy gave me so I can have, I'll have plenty of lights for that tree, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that was my biggest issue last year was all the lights on my tree just kept blowing out and they were those cheapy, you know, the regular, like old style, old style, not LEDs. And it was so frustrating that I just wanted to rip my tree down and just say, forget it. Because it literally, I put the tree together, all the lights were lit and literally days later, half the lights were out on the tree and it's, I'd spent the entire Christmas season with half the lights on the tree working. And I just couldn't be bothered. I was so annoyed by it because once you get all the ornaments on, you can't go back and take all the lights off without taking every ounce of the ornaments off to do it. And I stick the lights inside the tree. Like I jam the lights in on a, on a seven foot tree. I put about a thousand lights on the tree. I don't skimp on lights. I put lots of lights on my tree. And so it's very difficult to get them back off again once you get them on and wrapped all around the branches and all stuck inside and like, you know, with a crap ton of lights on that tree. And it's not even a, a big fat tree. It's a pencil tree. It's, it's not very fat. I have a big fat tree, but I don't use that one because I don't, I need to make room to use that one because it's so big and I couldn't make room for it this year, especially. That's true. I could have probably done like that, sat with alcohol ink and done that because I did that actually with my star that I had. It was white and I made it pink for in here. So I have a star for in here, which I think it still works. Um, I have a star for the top of the tree that I used here and I colored it with pink Sharpie. And I made it and it came out really cool. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. So yeah, I could have sat there and done that to the lights, but I didn't have time. I just wanted to get lights for it. Oh, am I doing that? I need that right now. I just wanted some damn lights for my tree. So no paint left in there. So, but I finally got the lights and I, I want to put lights over my curtain in the living room. So if I have enough left over of lights, I'm going to do some of those, but I have enough stuff to decorate my house like for Christmas, like crazy, except for a lot of lights, but I have like tons of decorations. Um, I have enough decorations to decorate like eight trees, I think. I just gave Chris all the decorations, some decorations for his tree in blue and silver. I have red and gold, blue and silver, purple and green, um, blue. I said, I said blue already, um, pink. And then I have stuff to do a tree in like an animal print, like a really cool animal print. I've got a lot of crap for decorating trees. I've been collecting for years and years and years and years and years. But, and I have like all kinds of snowmen to do like my whole mantle and my whole like base of the fireplace in like snowmen. I have all these little snowmen figurines. I have like, I don't know, I have a lot of crap 
for decorating for Christmas because I used to go all out. I used to take everything in my living room and everything and pack it all away and then put all Christmas stuff out in its place like an insane person. And I cannot be bothered with that anymore. Not considering nobody ever sees it and nobody comes to my house. That's why I don't do it like that anymore. And I don't even think I would put up a tree this year if it wasn't for the fact that I have people coming for New Year's Eve. So at least the tree will still be up for New Year's Eve for somebody to see because otherwise nobody's going to see it. Because nobody, it's not like anybody ever comes over to my house anymore. I mean, I used to have people over a lot more often, but not anymore. Hi, Emily. What happened? Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your puppy. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. It's never fun losing your fur babies. Well, hopefully we can cheer you up with our jibber jabbering and crafting nonsense that we do. I don't know, but we can try. <laughs> All right, let me dry that. All right, are we ready for number seven? Or is anybody still working on their stenciling? I just did two stencils today. I didn't do, usually I do more than that. Don't be burning your kettles now, Sandy. Oh, uh, the wooden purses, um, what the hell are they called? This is what happens. Um, oh, I'll tell you, hold on. It's sitting out in my, <laughs> it's sitting out in my living room, but I can tell you one second. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. This is my brain. <laughs> my brain without drugs. Maybe I need drugs. I don't know. Um, <sighs> Um, uh, Enid Collins, Enid Collins, that's it. <laughs> Idiot I am. Enid, E-N-I-D-C-O-L-L-I-N-S. Enid Collins. 
her purses, she usually has it written inside or on the bottom. I think most of them are written on the inside. It says Enid Collins. Yeah, I love those purses. They're kind of they're kind of cool. Why did your dad have some of those? Yeah, I only have one, and I wanted to collect more of them, but that's the only one I got so far. <laughs> yeah, they have one that has a poodle on it, but every time I find it, it's very expensive. It's one of their, I guess, more of their high-priced ones. You can find them, like, you know, dirt cheap. Um but you know you could find them pretty cheap like 20 bucks 25 bucks but some of the more collectible ones like the ones that are really collectible um they're like you know there's just a few of them and there's you know one of them is the poodle one and that one i could never find is that that poodle one but I have, yeah, I have one with flowers on it and, um, I had to get, I, a couple of the flower petals, like they have gems in the petals I are missing. So you can go online and actually get replacements. So I got replacements for my, for it. I just haven't put them in yet, but I have the replacement, uh, gems for them so that I can, uh, so I can replace the flowers with the original gems that are supposed to be in there. All right, I'm going to pick another card. Yeah, they're cool persons, aren't they, Emily? They're neat. I thought they were so cool. Add circles. Add circles. Now you can draw them, paint them. Um, or punch them out of something. So sometimes I'll like punch them out of something. I'll punch them. Let's see, what do I have laying around that I can use to punch some circles out of? Do I have scrap paper lying around? Let me see. Um, mostly Christmas. Oh, this one's not Christmas necessarily, so I can use this and punch some circles. I have big circles, so do I have my little circle punch? Uh, I'm going to get a roller circle. I've got two inch or something. Here. I'll do this one. I'll do a scallop circle. You just added circle icing faces to your people cookies. <laughs> people cookies, huh? huh? Yeah, that counts. Are you are you doing mixed media mashup on cookies? <laughs> oh my goodness, you're funny. Mixed media mashup cookies. Um, lubricate punches when they become stiff. I've not ever done that, but I would imagine, I don't know if there's much you can really, excuse you, get back here. Um, I don't know if you can really do anything to necessarily lubricate your punches. Um... Because you got to be careful. I mean, I guess... You could put a little oil 
um, very, very little though. Or, oh, here's an idea. What about if you took a paper, right? And like a piece of cardstock and rubbed some Vaseline on it, like on the paper and then punched it. Like on the back and front, I would rub some Vaseline and then punch it. Or I guess you don't have to do it on the back, just the front where it's gonna punch. Oh, and wax paper. I didn't even think of that. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. But yeah, if that doesn't work, try the Vaseline. Just put some on paper. Not like a slather. Like don't slather it with Vaseline, but like rub it into the paper. Do you know what I mean? Like rub it into the paper so it's not all goopy and gross. And just, you know, try that if, you know, worse comes to worse. I don't know, but yeah, try wax paper. That that must be a fix. I don't I don't know. I've never had I've had one that I have a punch that's misaligned that doesn't cut very well and it, I got it on clearance so it figures, right? <laughs> but I've not had one that was stiff necessarily. I'm going to run and get some tea. I'll be right back. All right, and I got my Andy's mints because, you know, oh crap, that fell over. Hold on a minute. My glue sticks went everywhere. Glue stick explosion over here. I think that actually happened earlier when I was sewing my thing, trying to get it done prior to the live stream being as quick as possible. You could probably tell when you when I do put the video up, you'll probably hear it in my voice that I was like hauling ass to get done. But I didn't do any of the actual sewing in the video. I just said, okay, now I'm going to stitch, you know, whatever. And I have to do that off camera because I really didn't have a way to show it. And it was kind of pointless to try to show the sewing part. So I just would shut off the camera for that part. But I mean... You don't really, if either somebody's going to know how to use a sewing machine and know to stitch, you know, I told, I, I said stitch around each piece of fabric, or they're just going to glue it, and they're not going to stitch, but if they know how to use a sewing machine, I'm sure they know how to sew in a straight line. Oh, that's a cute idea. I'm assuming that you're having Thanksgiving at your house, Roy. That's a really cute idea, making the cookies as the place cards. I 
I used to have a box. I have like a little jewelry box. Sorry, it was stuck in my teeth. Not a jewelry box, but like a little tiny box that you would hold jewelry and you can get them at the dollar store. And I would decorate them with like a pretty paper and then put a tag that hooked to the lid of the box that had the person's name. And inside the box, there would be candy, like Andy's mints or chocolate covered mints or whatever. And that was the place tags that I would use back in the day when I used to do like lots of Thanksgiving dinners with lots of people. Not anymore. And this way they can have a, like a few pieces of candy while they're waiting for dinner. But usually I had appetizers and stuff. And deviled eggs and stuffed mushrooms. And I used to do all kinds of stuff for appetizers. There would be so many appetizers that by the time we got to the turkey, everybody was full. <laughs> but they'd eat anyway. <laughs> all right. Is everybody ready? I'm going to go on to number eight. <laughs> oh my god you're gonna do an icing texture paste there you go that should work use household stamps there you go you can stamp into your cookies with the bottom of your shoe <laughs> gross <laughs> let's see can i get to my household stamp there they are of course i'm gonna use bubble wrap i always use bubble wrap that's just my thing. I like this one too. And then I like this one. And I'm going to do little circles. All right, that's enough, girls. Oh, it might help if I wrote it. It's so funny. Um, if somebody's actually at the door. Right now she's just barking because she hears like a bird or an animal or the neighbors came home, whatever. There's nobody at the door. But if somebody's actually at the door and I'm back here in this room, I have a baby gate up so she can't get in here. But I, you know, the door is open. She'll bark at, this is what, this is what Winnie does. All, none of my other dogs ever did this. They would always just stay at the door and bark, 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 bark at the door. Well, Winnie will bark at the door if somebody's at the door and then she will run back here. And continue to like bark and growl and do like not a major bark, but she'll be like, rr, 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 and like a little bark here to get me out. That's what she's cut. She comes to get me. None of my other dogs ever did that. They always stayed by the door and like growled at the door and jumped at the door and would bark at the door. But Winnie only does that for a second. And then she runs back here like crazy, stands at my door and like barks and growls and does these cute little things until I come out. And when she sees me, she like goes back and forth in circles until I go out to see what's there. Like she tells me basically, mommy, 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 come quick. Hurry up, mommy, mommy, come quick. And that's what she does. And it's the funniest thing. I love it. It's so funny. All right. That's enough. No. You don't need to tell me. There's nothing there. All right. Stop it. Stop. That's enough. Take a chill. Okay? Take a deep breath. Take a chill. Hey, I said that's enough. See, she's at my door because now she thinks somebody's at the door because Tigger barked. And she typically will come to the door if Tigger barks. She'll come here because she thinks, oh, that must be, it must be somebody at the door because Tigger's barking. Let's see. I want to do pink or like this weird kind of 
a violety metallic pink. I'm going to add a little pizzazz to this. But it's just funny that she does that. Because none of my other dogs ever did that. And so I just found it to be fascinating that she would go and actually come back here and get, you know, to get my attention. All my other dogs would stay by the door and just continually bark until I got out there, you know. But she actually comes and gets me. Winnie's very smart. She's a very smart dog. She's she's smart and she's very like she has to like be nosy about everything and and know everything that's going on to the point where like if she was a person she would be like the old lady that lives down the street that's always in everybody's business that would be Winnie like would know every bit of gossip that was going on in the neighborhood and you know that's Winnie because she's like miss gotta know everything She's also the doctor of the family because she she knows if you're sick and she like checks you and she'll like if you open your mouth she'll like she'll lick your teeth and like look in your mouth and like it's just weird she does weird things she's just a weird dog but I love her she's so quirky none of my dogs were ever as quirky as her You're having ham, Mary Jane? I'm a turkey lover. I can't not have turkey on Thanksgiving. I gotta have turkey. It's my favorite. And for Christmas, what I usually do for Christmas is Italian. I would do all Italian food. I would do baked ziti. I would do um, eggplant parmesan, chicken parmesan. Like, that's what we did for Christmas would be all Italian because I didn't want to make another turkey. I mean, actually, I would make another turkey because turkey's my favorite. But my mom kind of did that for New Year's or uh, Christmas Eve dinner she would do like she would make like a ham or something but she would also do a lot of Italian dishes whereas I just do Italian dishes I don't do the ham and all that but you know she she kind of did that with the Italian food and we're not Italian but I love Italian food so and so did she so we would do like a big Italian spread of all kinds of with garlic bread and all kinds of stuff and that's what we would do for Christmas and if I, when I had Christmas dinners here, that's what I would do. I did, uh, I did, you know, Italian food. I just got it all over my hands. Oh, that's so funny, Janie. You whipped up the <laughs> you whipped up the the cranberry sauce. <laughs> I like I'm I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of people think I'm weird for this, but I love the jellied um kind of um cranberry sauce. I love that stuff. That's my favorite kind of cranberry sauce is the kind that's like the gelled big glob that comes out. That's my favorite. But because some people don't like that, I usually buy a jar of the the kind that's like the cranberries. It's like looser or whatever. I don't know what they call it. Um, I buy the other kind too. Um, so I have both kinds because I like the jellied kind myself because I'm a weirdo and I just love that stuff. I could literally eat that for like a dessert <laughs> and have. I just like it. I'm a bizarre person. But that's what my mom always made and I, you know, you, you get, you get used to that and, you know, I just, that's what I always have. 
I make all the everything else from scratch, but that I buy the can and you cut the end of the can and then you just put a little hole with like a, a can opener thing and the other end and it goes <laughs> into a bowl. <laughs> and everybody used to laugh at me. They'd be like, you make all this food from scratch. You go through so much trouble. You cook all day. And then for the cranberry sauce, like I make my own, I make my own gravy out of the drippings, the whole nine yard. I make the whole thing, right? I grabbed the cranberry sauce just into a plate and everybody just laughed at me when I did that. I was like, sorry. <laughs> They're like, you probably could have made the most amazing cranberry sauce. I'm like, yeah, I said, but I like this better. <laughs> yeah, the whole cranberry sauce. That's the other one that I got, but I don't, I don't usually like, I like it okay. I mean, but I like, I just like the jellied stuff. That's my favorite kind. It's like a gelatin and I can literally eat it like it's jello, but I love it with my turkey. Um, it's the best. I mean, you can't have turkey and not have cranberry sauce. A bite of, every bite of turkey, you have to dip it in the cranberry sauce. My favorite is the leftovers because like, yeah, they're the, that's the best the next day going in and eating. I can eat, I can eat leftovers for two weeks. You know what I mean? Like if I had enough, but usually it only lasts me like four or five days at best, but I'll have like a Thanksgiving dinner every day for a week and I love it. And sometimes if I got like, you know, if I had people that were staying over, um, and like, going to be here the next day, which happened a few times, I would make these little things. It would be like, a, it would be, I called it the Thanksgiving muffin. It would be Thanksgiving dinner in a muffin. And basically what I would do is take a muffin pan and I'd put stuffing on the bottom, turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, and like whatever vegetable on top or whatever. Um, I can't, depending on what we had. And sometimes I would take a biscuit top and put it on the, on the bottom or on the top. But well, actually we did the biscuit on the bottom and then if I had the other piece, I'd do a piece of the biscuit on the top too. So usually we did biscuit on the bottom and then the turkey or the stuffing and then turkey and then mashed potatoes with the gravy and then you, oh, the cranberry sauce on top and then like a, a piece of biscuit sticking out of it. Put it in the oven and cook it. And then just a lot of times it'll come out whole, but sometimes it'll come out, but then kind of fall, but it's so good so good and you just make these little bite size or not bite size but like portion size pieces and then you slather more bit more gravy over top of it and yeah it's really good so if you have people going to be over at your house the next day you can make those and just put them in a muffin pan and stick them in the oven at like you know 350 for like 25 minutes and it's like you have this amazing little and it'll cut as long as you don't put the gravy on until after because sometimes we put it in the middle like we'll put the turkey and then put gravy or put the mashed potatoes and then put gravy but if you wait and put the gravy afterwards it will come out as a whole like muffin and then you put the gravy on top but sometimes i do it different i don't know sometimes i like the gravy in the middle of it but anyway so that's what i do sometimes if i was having people over it's fun they're fun to make and kids, kids would usually like those. Not that I ever really had kids over at my house at the day after Thanksgiving, but I have made them. Well, no, because I've made them for like, um, you know, family, kids, niece, nephews, whatever's years ago. But most of the time it would just be adults. I don't 
know if I've ever had homemade cranberry sauce either. I bet you if I did, I'd probably want to make it from then on. But as of now, I'm still too lazy. Well, I'm not really that lazy if I make everything else from scratch. But I have all my recipes that I use every... Oh, I forgot the most important dessert. Did I say that I'm, I'm making creme brulee? I totally left out. I said I'm making the strawberries and the pumpkin pie. And I didn't mention the creme brulee. I'm making creme brulee. That's the main dessert. But creme brulees are small. So I figure pumpkin pie and the strawberries can all go with it. But yeah, I'm making creme brulee. I make it just like at a fancy restaurant where it's like, it's really good. And it's got the, I take the vanilla bean and do the whole thing and I make it, it's perfect. Um, and the sugar on top with the torch. I do all that. It's yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay, what color am I going to do this? Maybe I'll do like a... Um, maybe we'll add a little more vibrant pink. Yeah, I'll take pictures of what I do as I'm doing it or video. If I make like, you know, when I'm making the creme brulee, if I can do it but yeah yeah I gotta make those tomorrow morning when I get up as I have like a million and a half ramekins because I usually ma I made them last year for New Year's Eve when everybody was here for New Year's Eve circles. <clears throat> I thought about making my cheesecake instead of the pumpkin pies, but they take a lot longer. Cheesecakes take a bit longer to make. See, I don't do brine brining because I did that once and it didn't make a damn bit of difference. Um, so uh, it was, to me, it was a wasted step. I thought it was going to make such a big difference, but it didn't. I think probably because what I do to my turkey, it, you know, does, I think, more than brining it does. I prep mine with Granny Smith apples. I take the Granny Smith apples. I cut all the peels off of it. I just... I cut it into slices. I have like one of those things you put over the apple and you push down and it slices it. And I take it and I shove a ton. I shove like every cavity, the two cavities for the thing. I take sticks of butter and chop them up and I shove in apples, butter, and this Adolfo's seasoning, Adolfo's or whatever it's called. It's like a, it's like a poultry seasoning kind of. And I sprinkle a whole bunch of that in there and I shove the cavity filled with apples and Adolfo's and butter. And like, it's like butter and apples and Adolfo seasoning like crazy. I shove it all in there like as much as I can. And then I take it and I put the whole Adolfo's on the whole turkey on top. 
Um, obviously, both cavities have apples and butter. And then, now this doesn't make for the prettiest turkey, but it makes it does make a big difference in the juiciness of the turkey. I take little slits and I cut slits in the top layer of the skin. And I take the apple slices and I shove them under the skin along with a pat of butter. And I do this in several different places all over the top of the turkey. And then I take the rest of the apples and st stick them under the legs and stick them all over along with a bunch of the butter. Like I literally the whole, it's like a butter apple turkey. Like the whole thing. I shove apples anywhere I can get them. And I promise you, it, it might not be the prettiest turkey when it comes out, but it is the juiciest turkey when it comes out. And it does not taste like apples. You do not want to eat the apples. Don't eat the apples because they're gross. But the turkey does not taste anything like apples. You would not even know that there was apples. But all the apples do is give juice to the meat. And it keeps the meat so moist that when you cut it, it's just like... It's crying, literally crying with juice. That's how juicy it is. It does not dry out at all. And then, of course, I leave it uncovered in the oven for the first, like, hour to, to hour and a half, maybe a little longer, to kind of start the browning process so that it really seals everything in. And then I put a tent of foil over, the, over it the rest of the time. And then for, like, the last hour, I'll let it, if it's still, because it doesn't brown as much. Um, so I'll let it brown further for like the last hour, but that's what I do. And I always get like an amazingly, like really, really moist turkey. And I use a butter ball. I only use butter ball because those are, those are the best turkeys. Because they're already infused with butter on top of the fact that I'm going to shove so much butter up its ass and apples that it's going to be just a buttery, yummy juicy, delicious turkey. <laughs> okay. I learned that trick from Chris's aunt. Because my mom always made the best turkey. She always had such a good turkey. And I never thought in a million years that anybody would have a better turkey than my mother. Well, one year... When me and Chris started dating, and or it might even, yeah, it was while we were dating. I was going to say it might even been before we were dating because I was always with his family. We were best friends. But anyway, we went to his aunt's house for Thanksgiving and had Thanksgiving at his aunt's house. And the turkey was amazing. And I was just like, what the hell? I'm like, what did you do to this turkey? And she told me, she goes, I shove so many ap apples in. She told me what she does. And I've been doing that ever since. And everybody that ever eats my turkey always says it's really good. So I can't really say, I can't complain. I've never had anybody say that it's, I mean, everybody always says turkey is good. You know, you're not going to really have anybody that's going to go, ew, your turkey was gross. But people usually rave about my turkey and, well, my, her, Chris's aunt's turkey, really. It's her recipe. But she's like, she went to school. She She's like. She went to school for all that. She went to school for baking and cooking and all kinds of stuff. So she knows things that we don't know. <laughs> but I tried brining it one year and I wasted a good two hours working on that. Getting that all prepared. Put, you know, going through so much trouble brining it. Thinking, ooh, that's going to make it even better if I put the apples in it. And I brine it the night before and then put the apples in it and everything. That's going to make it so much better. No, it didn't do anything. I brined it overnight and everything. Did nothing. I was like, okay. If anything, it made it taste worse. And I wasn't happy with that. Yeah, I was not thrilled when I brined it. I just, for some reason, the apples do a better job. No, I'm having three people. <laughs> but you wouldn't think it by all the food I'm about to make. Because I like a lot of leftovers. Barbara's going to lathe herself some forks and knives for Thanksgiving. <laughs> She's going to buy some exotic wood.
no, nothing tastes like apples. Nothing about the turkey tastes like apples. Not even the drippings. Nothing. I don't know. It does nothing but keep the turkey really, really moist. But there's no apple flavor to nothing. That's the thing. Like, I use the drippings to make a gravy. The gravy tastes normal. It tastes good. And, you know, obviously the apples have, absor you know, absorbed some of the turkey, I guess. You know, so they, they're usually soft and I just pull them all out and or I don't even pull them out of the cavity, but I just pull them off the skin, you know, where we're cutting, like when I shove it under the skin, I cut, I take those out, but they're usually just soft. And they're usually, I, I, one person tasted one once because they were curious because his aunt told me, don't eat the apples because they're disgusting. And one person I had at dinner one time said, well, I want to try one of the apples. I'm like, I'm telling you, they're disgusting. You don't want to try the apples. And he tried the apple and he was like, oh my God, it's gross. I'm like, see, I told you it would be gross. I said, don't eat the apples. <laughs> no, I use my drippings to make um, turkey dressing or, you know, turkey gravy. And so, no, they do not taste like, do not taste like uh, apples or anything. They just taste normal. And I use Granny Smith apples. Um... I've, I've always wondered if using like a different apple would make a different, would make any kind of difference. And I was tempted. I did get, and I might actually do this because I think I have more than enough for the stuffing. I got um, honey crisp apples to use for the stuffing um, because I'm making an apple stuffing. Um, and I'm, I might take a few of the, the, cause I bought a whole bag of the honey crisp apples. So I'm wondering if maybe I put a few of the honey crisp apples in along with the granny Smith, just to see if it makes any difference. I don't think it will, honestly. I think the apples just purely add or keep in the moisture and just add as many apples. Usually depending on how big of a turkey you have, usually like six apples. If you have a large turkey, I think I got five apples for mine and it's a 15 pounder. So I'm going to have an apple, at least an apple left over probably, but I'll just eat it. Um, but generally like if you have a really big turkey, maybe like six apples. Um, but yeah, you just want to shove it full on um, both cavities back and front with tons of butter. Like I'm talking a full maybe stick to two sticks of butter in the biggest cavity and then a, like a, like a stick of butter you know chopped up along with the apples just you know just sliced apples you know like you you do when you have one of those slicers that you push down and it gives you those little wedges that's the type of slices and just shove them in. i mean the ones for the cavity you don't even have to really slice them up you can just cut them in quarters and shove them in but when you put them under the skin it's easier if they're smaller slices and obviously you, you take the skins off the apples. So you, you peel this apple first and then put them in because this way all the juice from the apples gets in. Yeah. If you have a 20, a 20 pound turkey, then yeah, five apples at most will be fine. But yeah, it, it, it makes a difference in the flavor. Um, butter balls are the best turkeys. I feel for this. It works the best if you have a butter ball turkey. But it works with any turkey. I mean, I've done it with non-butterball turkeys, but I just I just like butterballs the best. I feel like they're the most tender turkeys you can get. But but yeah, it, it will work with any of them, obviously. So yeah, it's it it doesn't. I mean, when I put them I put them on the skin, like I said, you know, like I cut a little slit in the skin. I don't go all the way to the meat. Do you know how there's like two layers of skin? If that makes sense. There's like a, a top, like you'll see when you start slicing it, I just make a little slit and then I kind of like put my finger in and separate it. Does that make sense? You can put your finger in it and kind of separate it away from the other part of the skin. If you do it, you'll know what I mean. Just make a little slit, stick your finger in, make a little pocket and then shove the apple in and shove the butter in. And usually if you leave the butter out for an hour, it'll be softer and you can kind of shove it in there. And I do that, like, let's say the breast is here. I'll do one, two, three, four, at least four apple pieces and butter on the breast. And then, like, down a little bit further, I'll do them on the side of the, the leg piece. I'll do, like, at least one on each one where I slit it and stick the butter down in there and stick the apple in there. And then I just take the rest of the apples and put them all over the top with butter. And eventually they start to fall off, but at least they're on there. But yeah, I, I, I make it look like an apple paradise. The whole thing's covered and there's apples everywhere. And it, like I said, it, because of you sticking it under the skin, 
it doesn't come out as pretty because of course that little area is split so it's going to split but and it's not as pretty looking but who cares i don't care if the turkey's pretty when it comes out i just want it to taste good i don't care if it, what it looks like so mine don't come out like looking all pristine and perfect because i have little slits everywhere and i'm sticking crap down in it and everything so that's more important to me is that it tastes good rather than look good all right number nine number nine But for some reason, Granny Smith apples are hard to find the day or two before Thanksgiving. I don't know if everybody does this trick or if everybody buys Granny Smith apples. But for some reason, if I usually get them like a week ahead of time because I usually can't get them the day or two before. But you could try a different apple. It doesn't have to be Granny Smith. I'm pretty sure it doesn't really matter that much. But... She just used hers was Granny Smith, but I don't think it matters that much. I'm sure as long as it's any kind of, you know, sweet, this, I guess, you know, any kind of sweet, that the Granny Smith is more of a tart apple, so it can either be sweet or tart, I would imagine would be fine. I don't, I'm going to put, I'm going to put Honeycrisp in mine this year. Not all Honeycrisp, but like half and half, I think. I'm just going to do it because I'm curious to, I'm curious to see what it tastes like. I don't think it's going to make a damn bit of difference, to be honest, but. I, what question was that about how many people I'm having over? Yes, I already answered that. Three. I'm just having three people. That's it. But I like to cook Thanksgiving dinner and I like to make a lot because I like the leftovers. I, I want as much, I want as many leftovers as I can to eat for like a week because I will eat it for a week because Thanksgiving dinner is my favorite of all year. That's the one I look forward to the most is having Thanksgiving dinner. And I probably made way too much paint in there. Because Thanksgiving dinner is yummy. I mean, I mean, yeah, I could make a turkey dinner any time of year, but will I? No. Ugh, I'm getting this all over me. I've got paint everywhere. And I put made it too thick. That's fine. No, it doesn't matter. Let me see. Oh, I didn't splatter this one, but I'll use a different method. I'll use this and some more water. Good Lord. Oh, you do, you do a Thanksgiving for Christmas too? Yeah. My mom did sometimes, and then we kind of started, as I got a little bit older, because I was the last kid, so as we got a little older and we started doing Christmas Eve dinner, that's when we would open our presents, as, you know, when, once I became a teenager and then all the kids were kind of grown, we had Christmas Eve dinner at our house, my mom would do, and then we decided to do, like, Italian food, and then, so, my, we wouldn't cook for Christmas Day. Well, sometimes my mom would. She Sometimes she would cook for Christmas Eve and then Christmas dinner. But most of the time when we got older, it was just Christmas Eve. Or, just, yeah, just Christmas Eve. And she would make all Italian food. And that's what I like to do for Christmas, too, if I ever have people over. Which, nowadays, I really don't. So, but I used to have a bunch of people over for both Thanksgiving and then Christmas.
Well, it was a pilgrim holiday um, when Christopher Columbus, you know, I guess when they stopped deciding to murder the Indians the way they were doing. I don't know. Because <laughs> Christopher Columbus was a giant murderer. Um, so I guess when they decided to stop murdering the the Indians and actually make peace with them. Or something, I don't know. Or maybe it was before they were murdering them. I don't remember, but... I'm going to put down numbers 10, 11, and 12 as your optionals. And if you're done with yours, you can post it in, in the group. I have to make sure I have everybody's from the group from last week. Use blue. That's number 10. Number 12 is doodle or, or 11 is doodle or draw, draw. So you can like doodle on your piece. This is if you feel like you need to add more. And number 12 is use white, which I did when I splattered. <laughs> but you can stencil white if you want to or what have you. Okay. Let me look and see. Uh, let me get a piece of paper. last week that I missed because I know I'm missing people. Didn't you learn about Thanksgiving in school? Doesn't everybody learn about Thanksgiving in school? Like that's like the first thing you learn, usually. Right out loud, Winnie. Shut up. She's the thing where she goes, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> None of my the other dogs ever did that either.
I'm just looking real quick to see which ones I don't have at the moment from last week. Okay, I think I got all of them. Alrighty. Yeah, Roesta, you're, oh, that's right. You're, is it Ilja? Or Il, I don't know how to say your name, dang it. Dang it, I have you on here. I got you on here. I always go by the first thing I see when I say everybody's name in the live stream. And the first thing I see is Roesta. And I, I, it's always afterwards that I realize that your name is actually not Roesta. <laughs> or maybe it is. I don't know. But it's... Il I know Ilja is what you go by on Facebook. Is it Ilja or... Uh, or is it not I-L or is it Ilja? I don't know. If you were going to equip a kit for Mixed Media Mashup, what would you put in it? Um, well, obviously paint. A couple metallic paints, a couple acrylic paints, some book page or dictionary page or something like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Just go through the cards, really. I mean, go through the cards. They're in the group in the file section. You can see all the cards and you can just pick from there some of the main staples that are in there. You know, that's what I would tell you to do. I mean, you don't have to have every single thing that's in there, but just get some of the main staples that are in there and make yourself a little kit to, you, you know, that you can use for a mixed media mashup. I mean, you don't have to have everything that's in there, but. So make sure you're posting your pictures of your current the one that we just did and I'm going to do the drawing for last week people that didn't do theirs a lot or well either did do it live but also finished it up this week oh your cat's name is Roesta gotcha then okay and the winner is Rome Rome you won last week's Rome 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 are you still here Miss Rome you were here you might be working on yours. I don't know. So Miss Rome won. She won last week's. Congrats. Congrats. I do, Ilja. It's Ilja. Okay. Cool. I actually say a name right. Okay. So then we need to do this week's. And hopefully you guys are putting up your pictures as we speak All right. Has everybody gotten their pictures up on the group? Stand up, cup. And make sure when you're putting your pictures up, whether you're doing it today because you're playing along with us or if you're going to continue or finish it or do it for next week because you don't have to do it right now, but if you do it between now and next week, you'll also be entered to win, if you didn't know that. <clears throat> so when you do put it up, make sure you put MMM number sign 81, or just put number sign 81, 
or, you know, but make sure you definitely put number 81 somewhere on it. You know, like when you put your picture up, um, just put like MMM number 81. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything special. Just do this. Um, just put something like that. Um, this way I can find it because that's how I find it. Well, it's okay, Patty Ann. I'll just start getting the ones that I see and then I'll go back and refresh. Just be getting it up within the next, like, couple of minutes. Like, two minutes. Okay. All right. Let's start looking. There's Miss Deborah's. All right. There. Got to write everybody down. Miss Deborah's is very pretty. Very pretty, Miss Deborah. We got Miss Sandy's. Very pretty. Very pretty, Miss Sandy. Miss Lori. Ooh, and she put a pumpkin on hers. Very pretty. Is this your second time, Miss Lori? I think last week was your first time. Very pretty, very nice job. And Miss Donna. Very nice, Miss Donna. Miss Sharon. Beautiful, beautiful. John, very nice, John. Awesome. I like your Santa Claus. Two Santa Clauses. Miss Teresa's very pretty. Very pretty. Miss Ilja's. Very pretty. Very metallic y and shiny and beautiful. Miss Rome. Very pretty, Miss Rome. Beautiful, Miss. Miss Chris, very pretty. Oh, I like your little vine stamp. Very pretty. Beautiful, beautiful. Everybody always does such a good job. And this one is Miss Barbara. It's beautiful, Miss Barbara. Beautiful, Miss. Beautiful, Miss. She looks like she's got crop circles. <laughs> Doesn't that remind you of, like crop circles? <laughs> Very pretty. Ooh, Roy's making me some cookies. Oh, I want some cookies. <laughs> Ooh, Susan's got her turkey ready. Turkey dinner ready. Table. Okay, I think that's it. And then we'll go back up and refresh. Refresh and see what else we can find. We got Ilja's, we got Teresa's, and we got John's, and we got Sharon's, and we got Donna's, and we got Lori's, and we do not have Patty Ann. Very nice, Patty Ann. Hers has like crop circles too, like <laughs> that pattern, you know? Like, it must be a thing today. We got Miss Sandy's. Ooh, Miss Tiffany, very pretty. Beautiful. I like the numbers. That's awesome. We got Miss Deborah. Ooh, Miss Leo. Very nice. Connie, that's right. I always forget that. Let's 
see what I mean? It takes me forever sometimes to remember somebody's name. Miss Cheryl, very pretty. Beautimus, did I put a heart on hers? Yes, I almost always forget. I feel like I forget everybody's. We got Miss Rome's and we got Miss Barbara's and then we get down here and there are no more. We go up to the top and refresh. All these already. I want some of those cookies. They need to stop being in front of my face. Cookies are my weakness. I'm like a cookie monster. I wish there was a way to safely overnight cookies or get cookies that are. Well, actually, my chocolate. Usually, I've sent my chocolate chip cookies out because they stay soft. They don't get hard. And usually the mail takes like three bucks or three days to, to, to get sent out. So sometimes you can get cookies sent pretty quickly, as long as they're not like the kind that get hard easily. And that's Bobby's. We got that. And I don't think we have any more. No, not down this far. Let's refresh. I'll refresh again and then I'll check in and see if anybody's having any issues. So if you're having any issues getting your picture up, oh, they look cute. Oh my goodness, so cute. That one looks like she's got chocolate boobs. <laughs> I love these. They're so cute. Oh, I want to eat them. <laughs> I like the mouth open. It's just like, is that like a singing? Like, are they singing? That's so cute. Those are so cute, Roy. Oh my goodness. I love decorating cookies like that with the icing. You make like the colored icing with the confectionery sugar. Oh, see, I didn't do hers and I know I got her down here. I didn't put a heart. But I love taking the confectioner sugar and making the different colors with food coloring and then decorating the cookies. That's one of my favorite things to do for Christmas. I might do that this year for Christmas. I might make the cookies and then decorate them during a live stream or something. Sit here and eat all the cookies. Did I pass anybody? I got all of them, right? Yeah, I think I did. I don't see any new ones since I've started. And I've gone through a couple times. So let me go back to the beginning and I will check and see. Anybody having issues? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I'm glad you're having fun, Lori. Oh, really? You sent them all the way to Alberta, Canada? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I've sent mine. Mine, I've sent my, my chocolate chips before, but I don't think I've sent any other kind. I used to make like 10 different types of cookies. I was insane about making cookies. I used to love to make Christmas cookies. Who made those? Oh, Roy Bootsy. He, he's making cookies while John's playing mixed media mashup. <laughs> All right, so I'm assuming that everybody's got theirs in and because nobody's telling me otherwise. So we will put the names into my Halloween cup, my dirty Halloween. It's not really dirty. It's just stained with gesso. It doesn't matter even if it was. I'm the only one touching any of the stuff going in or out of it. So even if it was the one I would, you know, I don't know what else I would do with it, but it's a cup. It's a plastic cup. What can I say? It's not very exciting. I'm going to eat all those cookies. I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to steal them and I'm going to eat them all. And you're going to wake up and say, there was a cookie monster here last night. <laughs> and that would be me. I'm the cookie monster. I love sugar cookies, especially. Okay. Fold all of them up. Get 
in my hand. Pain in my butt. I can't pick them up. Thanks, Cheryl. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to everybody who's celebrating Thanksgiving because I know some people are not from here and they generally don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay. Let's see who the wiener is. Sharon! Sharon, you win! Sharon, you win! Miss Sharon! Miss Sharon won! Congratulations, Miss Sharon! You the winner! You the winner! You the winner! <laughs> Well, thank you for playing along tonight, or today. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's not nighttime yet. It will be in like another hour. <laughs> but I'm going to end it here. And then by about 3.20, 3.30, I'm going to have another live stream started. And we are going to start working on this journal because I need to get it done. So we are going to add pages to it and do all the fun stuff and all the things. Because I'm going to sew the pages to this one. And yeah, this one's got a fancy closure or flap that goes over it, which was, happened by accident because I was supposed to make it the same size as the other one and I ended up making it much longer. So I didn't want it to be this long because I thought that would be silly and I wouldn't have pages big enough to fit it. So I decided to make it this long like the other one, except it's got a flap that'll go over top of it and kind of by the time it's filled, it'll be like that. Um, so, and I'll have like, I'm gonna make a special little closure for it. So yeah, I'm gonna decorate. I was gonna put a pocket on the front of this one. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just gonna decorate it with something somehow, some way. Um, I don't know. I, I put a pocket on the other one, but I might do something else on this one. Or I don't know. Maybe I will put a pocket on it. I don't know. But either way. Either way, I will see you guys in a little while. Thanks for playing along, everybody. And uh, Roy, you better lock those cookies down because I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a little bit. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Poodle. Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy.